make him fly also. Charlotte Soccer Show, John Hayes, Danny Brams, we're here. It's, of course, Charlotte FC Match Week. Danny, it's a home match week. It's the first time that the crown is playing at the Fortress in a month. It feels like forever. It almost feels like, Danny, this is another home opener. It's been so long. It's great to see you today. Feels like the first time. Yeah, it definitely feels like we're back. It, we said this it, when we did our season preview, right? That we were going to have the home opener and then it was going to be forever until we got back uh, into the mix. And uh, I can't wait to be a hot fly on Saturday, our presenting sponsor. Thank you, hot fly. Can't wait to tailgate with all the crew there again and then be in the supporter section on Saturday. Can't wait. Uh, amazing shout out. The tailgate at hot fly starts at four o'clock on saturday make sure you're there we'll be hanging out leading up to kick our friends at ram retro are going to be there again as well so if you're looking for uh, a nice kit i know danny you you purchased a nice kit last time at the tailgate uh kits will be available at the tailgate through our friends at ram retro on saturday as well they're very friendly and uh yeah come see me about maybe a discount you know if you know me you can maybe get a discount uh johnny i'm really excited because we have a special guest for this preview episode for the match i want to bring him in real quick and uh it's continuing you know we get to uh, connect with all the people from MLS Season Pass, which is amazing. Please welcome Ross Smith to the show, everybody, who is going to be uh, on the call this weekend for uh, Columbus at Charlotte. Welcome, Ross. Hey, Ross. Hi. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Nice to meet you guys. Danny, you've got some voice, by the way. I live in Nashville as my base, and I would enjoy coming down to Broadway and listening to you sing. Ah, uh, excellent. Yeah. Well, hey, I was in Broadway last weekend. I lost my voice at Geotis, uh screaming at the referees <laughs> and the security yeah. personnel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But uh, we had a good time, Ross. I just want to introduce you for anyone who doesn't know you. You uh, have been calling Timbers action for a long time because you played for the Timbers. You played for the original Timbers. Uh, you played for the final USL era, you know, pre-MLS era. I don't even, NPSL, I don't remember the name of the Let's league. Let's go. But, uh, Ross is there you are the celebrating gym. a goal for the 2010 Timbers, my brother. <laughs> that is something else for you to dig that out. My center back partner, Footy Danzo. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, center back. I kept digging it also, by the way. Uh, saw you holding a nice little piece of silverware here after a win over the Sounders. Tell us about this one, my brother. I, don't, I didn't even know what the silverware was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was handed it, and it was the first ever game I played for the Timbers. And I had I'd come across from from uh, England playing. I was across in England playing for a bit. I had the chance to sign to sign for the Timbers. And I was in preseason for literally two days. All the guys were. And then we had a preseason friendly against C uh, Seattle Sounders. And so I thought we were going up to a park or to a little stadium to play. And as we were driving into to Seattle, the, the kit man, Sam Muni, who's still the kit man at Portland, <laughs> he said, I said, where are we playing? He said, oh, there it is over there. And I said, no, you're, you're joking me. And sure enough, we we were going into what, Lumen Field now. It was, mm -hmm. was Century Link back then. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe it. And we've come out for warm up. And there's nobody in the... In, in the seat and within 15 minutes the whole lower bowl filled anyways i was so off my levels of fitness everybody was and here we are going up against freddie youngberg um against yeah. casey casey keller was playing um was obafemi martins i don't think anyways yeah uh, it was just it was a, a strong so sounder was, side yeah for sure that was i'll give you one song yeah. since you asked for it we love you freddie because you have <laughs> red hair we love you freddie because you're everywhere and speaking of my arsenal love i got one more for you ross this is you putting a nice wow. tackle in on emmanuel adebayor i hate this guy clean this down i love it thank you the bottom of my stud touches the ball and the rest on him. And so that's clean. <laughs> it's clean. Up. That's the way I see it. it. It went to VAR. There's no doubt about it. Possible violent conduct. But there it is. You got the, that, bottom, <laughs> that bottom right stud on, that, on the ball there. That uh, was and, that's that, an amazing photo. That was something yeah. else. I wish I could share photos of us having a night out afterwards because they arranged <laughs> a meal with us. And here I am sitting beside Patrick Vieira having, yeah. having a meal. And finally, he leans over the table and he says, come on, where are we going tonight? You got to take us and the guys out. And I was like, I'm not your man, but our youngster on the team is. And we all went out and we had to find our way to training the next day. That was amazing. amazing. So that's your bona fide. So now you've been working for Apple. You worked for the Timbers. You're a great broadcaster now as well. So let's talk about Charlotte and Columbus, man. Thank you and welcome to the show. 
Oh man, thank you guys so much. That's the greatest intro I've ever had. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's come a long way, and I think you know when I look at this match coming in this weekend as well. We were just chatting offline about the level to which the the excitement has been for the games and the quality, and that's what stood out to me so far this year. And when I look to preview this match. I, uh, I, I hate to say, I think Charlotte has coming in as their opponent easily the best team in the league as a collective. What the manager, Wilfried Nancy, wants he is doing right now with the team is exceptional. It's, it's terrific. I was, I was on hand last week as they, they took apart the Red Bulls. And I dubbed that match going up against the Red Bulls with their new manager, Sandro Svats, as the pep and clop of MLS and Pep Guardiola of MLS, Wilfried Nancy, they took him apart. It was so impressive to watch in person. So I'm going to be interested to see what they do this week. But then at the same time, Dean Smith, I'm not on the ground yet. I'll be on the ground tomorrow. But for everything I hear, he's got a good thing going in terms of the culture, his relationships. It, 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 uh, it sounds like there's a really good feel about the club right now. One thing that's interesting to me about this match is, and it's something that MLS does every season, is they will play through international breaks. There's there's some internationals on Columbus. We know that obviously Columbus is a good side. We know they they roll deep, but there's some key players missing this weekend potentially for for Columbus. Is is that going to have an impact on this match? Yes and no. I think an impact in a way you might see your old player Derek Jones coming in the midfield, and I'm not privy to any of the eleven, but I'm just guessing to see what, what Nancy will do. Uh, with, Aiden Aiden Morris, Morris, with Aiden Morris gone, it, it's yeah. a natural fit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's the biggest area of impact, but Derek Jones is, is look good. And his, is um, his small sample size appearances with, with Columbus, Wilfrey Nancy really rates him. I, I think he feels he can get a lot out of him. And Derek Jones is always one that I thought there's more in there. I, I've followed his career since he was at Philadelphia um, he's come through Nashville. I saw him around the corner from here during COVID at a high school soccer pitch, him just keeping up his fitness levels when he couldn't go into team training and just watching him move across ground, the size of him. Um, you know, he's got good feet as well. So I see him coming in with what I would call one of the, the best players this league has ever seen in Darlington Nagby and 14 seasons in for me, he's the best ever player. Uh, in terms of ball retention, in terms of you give him the ball, he's going to look after it. It's it's phenomenal. He's, he's 14 seasons in and he's still doing it at the top level. So that midfield battle is going to be really interesting. Uh, my, my my confidence at this point is not feeling very strong. Oh, yeah. and I was I was I, I was feeling confidence going to this for a couple of different reasons, though, Ross, because Charlotte FC is actually very good at home. Charlotte yeah. FC has has not lost a match at home in, in a very long time. Uh, I think it goes all the way back to, to to last summer at this point. I want to say, I don't know the exact number, but it's between 10 and 15 matches at some point. Charlotte mm -hmm. FC at all competitions hasn't lost at home. So a, a draw could be a possibility uh, this mm -hmm. weekend as well. But uh, obviously Charlotte FC dealing with some injuries right now, and that's been a big topic of conversation. Our, our sole DP, senior DP, that is Enzo Capetti, out with a Dean Smith describes as a tight hamstring. Danny, we saw him uh, today out on, on the practice field yeah. Thursday. That is a, not not a horrible thing to see, but at the same time, I think last week Dean Smith didn't necessarily rule Enzo Capetti out. Uh, do you think it's gamesmanship? Do you think Dean's put him <laughs> out there and just kicking it around to, to keep Columbus on their toes? It'll be interesting. I mean, I, I you guys will will know Dean Smith more than more than me. And, you know, Dean Smith doesn't strike me, though, as a guy who would want to play these games, isn't bothered about playing these games and putting them out in front of the cameras. I think what stands out to me is they're loose. They, they look happy. I always feel like if you're carrying a long term injury, you're not so happy. Mm -hmm. um, and even little things like flicking the ball around like they're doing, um, you know, they must be close. And, you know, for Charlotte fans, you know, hopefully close means they're involved this this weekend because they're a huge yeah, part totally to, to what they're doing. Enzo Capetti, I know it hasn't quite worked out for him this, this season or as a whole since coming to the league, but he's gotten himself in good positions this year and could easily have three or four goals. Um, so, you know, to get him back and, and just feel, you know, in, in the right spaces, Ajiman, what, could he be the main guy? I, I don't know. I thought last week showed some glimpses, but I just feel you need that that killer Capetti, even though he hasn't shown that consistently. Mm -hmm. But I think he carries with him, like you know, he's someone that could always pop up. And Vargas, I think, on his day is is terrific to watch. Just lacks consistency. But anyways, that would be a huge lift if they're both back in for uh, for this weekend. 
Yeah, I mean, Kerwin was an ankle issue where he got uh, pretty hard tackled and went down and was down for a while and then tried to carry on and then have, had to sub off, you know, a couple minutes later. Yeah. Enzo, as a guy who is a striker who specializes on running in behind, and that's what Dean has instructed him to do, I'm willing to wait for him to come all the way back. I don't want him rushing back with a hamstring. You know, I, I don't think that's a wise decision. I'm not a doctor. But we have what we, it takes in Ajman to get goals. He had a great chance at a header that went just wide. Really wish that had been on target, to be honest, uh, uh, yeah. late against uh, Nashville that could have you know brought the point back. But I feel like Charlotte's just on the verge. And I think that's why a lot of us might be a little bit nervous, I feel, in the Charlotte fan base because we've seen a culture change under Dino. But is – is the result really going to be there? Our results are better because we've had horrible starts to the season, our first two seasons. Yeah. Uh, what, are you, what are you looking for in terms of Charlotte, even if beyond the result, if we have such a tough matchup coming in, what can we show you uh, to show continued progress and, and uh, rest fans' rumbling stomachs? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do have to remind that I know, you know, it'll be quickly remembered that you did beat Columbus last year. I was calling that game where you beat Columbus and was it Hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, we did, yeah. Scored, uh, scored a great goal uh, on that day. Um, I, I think the key is, for me, when you start to find out that link between the midfield and the uh, – attack in half. And when I mentioned Carol Swiderski scoring that goal last year, I thought at times, I think the difficult question was, where is he best suited on the pitch? And when he was playing the number 10 position, for me, that's when he was at his, his best or so false nine coming in. So that link up play into that front half and providing that service for, for Kabetti or if it's Ajiman will be, uh, will be key. And it'll be key in transition as well. Um, Columbus are terrific on the ball. And so when you do win the ball, you have to be smart with it. You have to look after it. And I know Dean Smith wants to go quick in transition when they win the ball. But if nothing's happening, to be able to then to knock it around, have that possession, it's just going to be so important because I watched the Red Bulls. They they had their legs uh, run into the ground last week. That Columbus crew just passed their legs off last week. And the Red Bulls couldn't get close to them after 60 minutes, 70 minutes. We're, we're not, we're like close to being back to full strength with the new DP coming in hopefully next week after international Elbada. And so it's like, if we can just get through this, I, I don't know. It does help that we're at home as Johnny said, right, John? I mean, we, we have a mod around here, protect the fortress, defend the keep, sort of go with our whole crown theme. <laughs> what do you feel, Johnny, are we going to do it this weekend or what? Uh here in this conversation, right, my takeaway is from a tactical point of view, right. I don't hate the idea of sitting back. I don't think <laughs> I don't hate the idea of allow if Columbus wants the ball and they're so and they're so talented at keeping the ball and having the ball. I say let them have it. Sit mm -hmm. back uh, and try to play on the counter in this match. To me, that feels like if you're going to sneak a, a three point upset at home, that's maybe the best way to do it. It's not the most exciting kind of football in the world. Obviously, you want to go out there. You want to play front foot football at home. Mm -hmm. But if you're so spread out. If you're turning the ball over in the midfield, giving it to Columbus, and you don't have enough guys behind the ball, like we have, it could, been, get, yeah. <laughs> it could get out of hand easily. What do you do? You think that's not um, a bad tactical plan against Columbus? I, I like Ajiman when he's running in behind. So I think the size of him is his hold up play. I think needs work, and look, I've got a soft spot for him. Uh, we went to the same same school, University of Rhode Island. I know his oh, no head way. coach well, really well. So I've never met Patrick before. I've always looked forward to meeting him. But I, I think he's got a huge upside. And one of those is when he's getting the, the, the defender on his shoulder or on his back, he can roll him, he can run, he moves well. Um, so to your point, the uh, the kind of sit and, and then to be able to break, I think it could be a great tactic to be able to use. I also think Melanda and, um, and Privet, I think they have some work to do. And I think they've got a great manager to be able to show that work. But I think, you know, for them, pressing and going forward, which we saw in their Christian Latanzio. I thought when it worked, it was great last year, the 1v1 marking, but they showed in any center back would show vulnerabilities when it doesn't work. And I think they got exposed quite a bit last year. And I think for them, they need bodies around them. So to be able to sit in and if you have Angie Man up front, you know, with his pace, with his physique, um, I think it, it, it could work. Well, here's some good news, right? You're coming to Charlotte uh, tomorrow. You're flying in. Uh, we're heading over to training, so make sure you get Patrick. Uh, take uh, take him aside tomorrow. Meet him at training. He's a great guy. Yeah. And to, to pre prepare for that, just uh, go on our YouTube page, Charlotte Soccer Show. We interview Pat on Sunday. We had at Crown Legacy's opening match of the season. The MLS Next Pro team. Patrick stopped by. We did a pregame show there, and we and we we talked to him. He seems like he's enjoying his football. And believe it or not, uh, and I think this is really difficult, right? And and, and from your perspective, I, somebody who's playing in that center back role. 
I imagine you logged many full 90s in your career, right? <laughs> this this past Saturday was Patrick Algemong's first full 90 in MLS. And now he's got to turn around and potentially do that again. That's yeah. it's It sounds easy, but uh, tell us how difficult that is for a player to go back-to-back full 90s for the first time in MLS. Yeah, I think more the emotional side of it and the recognition – this is your chance. This is your chance. We have a new manager in as well. And, you know, we've, we've seen it in, you know, other teams where all of a sudden um, like, like Duncan McGuire, for instance, he oust for Orlando city. He ousted the, the designated player striker for Orlando last year. And uh, Duncan McGuire, just a young kid out of college. And so it, it's there for you. And it's a similar situation. Capetti hasn't really been doing it. Ajiman has his opportunity now. So physically, mm-hmm. I, I think he'd be up to it. I think it's that emotional, um, the the emotional sort of letdown from last week. He, he didn't. He had a few big moments that really didn't go his way. I think it should have been a penalty uh, against Shaq Moore. Um, you know, so a couple yeah. moments didn't go his way. How does he turn that around this week at home to be able to say, right, this is my opportunity? Yeah, that's a great. Shot I there. wasn't going to show this. I wasn't going <laughs> to show this, but but you did have it. You ready. brought it up, Johnny and I. Before you popped in, Ross, I was like. I probably won't show this, but if Ross brings it up, I just want to have it. But yeah. What do you you guys think? It's a penalty? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yes. worth looking. It's worth the ref at least going to check. I know it was a bad is it was an inconvenient timing for that to happen. And and, and the penalty yeah. spot, it's interesting because you've had uh, you were awarded a penalty against New York yeah. and uh and Vargas has missed it. You had a penalty VAR that went against you in Vancouver, VAR went against you in Toronto, and no penalty call in Nashville. So the penalty yeah. spot has been a talking point for for Charlotte. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And Dean, Dean Smith hasn't uh, hid from that, by the way. I, I, I was not expecting him to to kind of speak up about it, but uh, he called it a stonewall penalty. And uh, it's just one of those things. It's it's the way the, the ball bounces, right? It's a long season. You're, you're, the referees aren't always going to be perfect. So for me, uh, when you when it goes against you uh, so many times in a row, that makes me think Charlotte FC's due uh, for one to, to get a break go their way on Saturday night. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that, Johnny, wholeheartedly. Uh, Ross, bef- while we've got you, I want to take make one more little connection here, which is that uh, you have a lot in common with Ajimong. He went the full 90. You also have some things in common with another guy who went full 90 on the complete opposite edge of the uh, end of the age and experience spectrum, Scott Arfield, a mm-hmm. man with UK and Canadian roots like yourself. Uh, he's maybe a little more UK. You're maybe a little more Canadian, but uh, <laughs> maybe you'll get a chance to meet him. Maybe you, he, Great. he, or he's probably a better guy. When uh, when uh, when Man City came to Portland and asked you where to go out on the town, you deferred to the young guy. I would not ask Patrick. I would ask Arfield. I would ask Arfield <laughs> where to go out on the town here in Charlotte when you get to training. But for sure, tell me your thoughts just about. You talked about no connectivity. Uh, the connectivity we lost with Carol Swiderski leaving. Is our field or Diagra from what you've seen at all? Like, are they the guy to do it? Do we need to go get a new DP number 10 in the summer? Like, where are you at with Charlotte's attacking connectivity? Can we find it long term? Yeah, I, I don't know where to land on Diagra. I just, I, I don't know what separates him to make him special. And I always look at that in this league. Okay, what what separates you from, from the rest? I, I talked about Nagby and his ball retention, and that's what's made him supreme. Diagra, I, I don't know. Um, with Scott Arfield, I think just the the uh, the experience that he has, the calmness, and you know what I would lead to believe uh, a leader in, in the dressing room as well. That voice, mm-hmm. so for sure. But I, I think you need more. Um, you, you you definitely need more in there. Just given what the league has done in this off season, it's been a terrific off season as a whole for MLS and seeing what's out there, which is maybe one of the the great things that I get to do in in this position. You know, having chats with with guys who are on the ground, know all the nuances like yourselves um, and seeing, you know, what the storylines are around the league. And so for Charlotte to be able to keep pace, it, those are good names that you've mentioned, but I think you you need a couple of really great names to come in. I'll, I'll, def- I'll defend Deagre by just saying he did get the pullback goal right before half at Nashville. And he yeah. has our only, he had our only assist on the year before that, before he finished that one. So. Yeah. And Ad- sure. Adjuman had a nice touch into yeah. that as well. He did, yeah. Quick, the quick secondary the from, uh, from Patrick to create it to Yeri was real nice for sure. And, yeah. and, a, and a nice mentality from Diagra as well, considering mm-hmm. it was the first time this season he, he did not get tapped on the, the back to, for the start, and mm-hmm. there's an injury, and then he comes yeah. in and, and still impacts the game and, and has a positive I, um, outcome. 
I do agree. I wouldn't mind another, you know, DP number ten with you know. <laughs> yeah. Come in, you know. Well, uh, <laughs> you're, uh, you're Greaseman. Let's go. You know, yeah. You, Ross, your, <laughs> yeah, your colleague, <laughs> your colleague at um, at Apple NLS season pass, uh, Sasha Question came on the show and said, "This is a this is a number ten league, and uh, if you don't have a, a DP number ten, you're you're probably a little bit uh, far behind." And that's that's kind of where I want to transition with you is so Danny and I get to have boots on the ground here in Charlotte and and really get to focus on this club and uh, you're somebody that gets to travel all over the country, um, all <laughs> over uh, North America to see all these different clubs and and MLS as a whole. What's what's your what's your week look like right when you get assigned a match yeah. and you get to dive in and, and learn about all these different teams. Uh, it obviously it's super fun, but it's it's a lot of a lot of work too. It is, and for that, it's a, a beast that I I never would have seen coming when I got into this role before with the Timbers. I would I would know the Timbers the ins and outs like Diego Chara. What does he like having for breakfast? I'd be able to tell you all those things. And so my match prep was just okay. Let me let me focus on the other team, but essentially our our ownership and and the local broadcast they want to hear mostly Timbers. So seventy five percent Timbers. 25% the other way. So now turning to 50-50 and digging into the nuance, I find it it starts on a Sunday. We get a message from our, our producer, whoever our producer will be for, for the following week. We get a message on Sunday saying, who do you want to talk about? And you think, oh my goodness, I've just finished diving into these other two clubs. Now I've got to turn my attention this way. So really it starts from Sunday afternoon. And, and I get back to that, trying to find the nuance and making sure that that nothing's missed. You don't miss a little unique storyline that you would have just naturally had when I was the local broadcast. So that's the biggest challenge and, and building up. And, you know, on the Saturday, just making sure all the notes come together. But that's the most fascinating thing at the same time when you do find the storylines. And you, I just see the league in a different way now. I've stepped outside of my bubble and I see it in a different way. I, I, I get to network. I get to have more conversations. It's it's fascinating, but it's it's exhausting at the same time. I will say this when you, I, I sure you do trust doing your own research, but whenever you need sub to that YouTube channel, like we, like John mentioned earlier, you want to see the Ajumong interview, hit the sub, everybody watching. If you've watched this far, 20 minutes in, hit the sub, give us a like, it helps. It helps uh, spread it all around. And uh, we will always keep you abreast on everything going on with Charlotte Ross for sure. Oh, uh, it's, it's great. The, the local presence I've, I've, I, I love. And to, to that point, I learned so much from guys like you, which is great. Uh, it, Thank you. One thing about being an analyst, uh, and I've done some uh, this past season in college soccer, I, I call it Queens University is uh, right mm -hmm. up the street from from where I am here in Charlotte. And and I hopped in the booth and did some analyst work. And I just want to get your take on what I enjoyed about mo most about it is that when the when there is a goal scored, right, you've got your <laughs> you've got your play by play partner. Right. And th they call the goal and you're just sitting. You're quiet. You're waiting in the wings. It's your time to bring the energy. How fun is it for you? after a goal your play-by-play -play partner has a great call and then the producer's in the ear and says replay coming and it's your time to own it you know it's like you, you do you think about bringing the energy in that moment yeah I think I, I don't know how you handle it John in terms of because I you can see different formulas for for that for that goal goal call or the breakdown afterwards I'm usually thinking okay what where did this start what was the key to this moment and it would I had a great boss back in Portland who, who just preached to me, tell me the why. Don't tell me the what. Don't tell me that Vargas got the ball, he cut in. What a great shot that was. It's, well, why is that a great shot? Why was he able to get into that area? So my mind starts doing all that. But then at the same time, you're getting into the ear of the producer saying, hey, can you, sh I saw something here. Can you show me it? And when you, we, we've got a great producer um, this weekend. We call him Buck and, um, and, and Ken Neal who are, have such great experience that I could get into the ear to Buck real quick, say, Buck, I saw it. And he's like, I already see what you're seeing. And so that helps. And so you're getting that picture and you know what you can focus on. So that's a long winded way around to say it's exciting, but it's that calm of like, okay, I need to capture this, this moment of brilliance. This is what made the difference. I need to communicate that to the producer. And then I need to try and communicate it to the audience. I've got a feeling that on our Sunday show, we, we always do our, our Sunday show live at Hot Fly Brewing Company here in town, right on South Mint Street, just a few blocks down from the stadium. Uh, great place to be. Uh, we're going to be there tailgating before the match and then be back there on Sunday. And what we love to do is, is we show highlights of the game and we talk about it uh, on the show afterwards. And I've got a feeling, I've got a hunch, and I'm hoping that we get a Ross Smith goal call, maybe a couple goal calls for Charlotte <laughs> on the show. I, 
That's that's good. I'm fortunate. The guy I work with, Tony Husband, he uh, long long time with the BBC, has done Premier League matches. I love his goal calls as well. And it when it comes through, it, it's terrific. He it just I don't know it it just got a way about him. He's got a turn of phrase, but uh, that's really neat what you guys do. I would love to check it out sometime. Yeah, if absolutely. your flight hey. gets delayed, if your flight gets delayed, you're stuck in Charlotte overnight. Swing <laughs> by. We're right by the stadium. Oh, I would love it. I, I, can I make that excuse? It's delayed to my wife and my little one, and have an extra day and a few pints with you guys. Yes, just blame Danny, not me. <laughs> That'd be terrific. Um, it's it's been a pleasure having you on the, sh on the show, Ross. Uh, I, I wish you nothing but the best. We'll be following you all season long. And you know, anytime you're doing a Charlotte match, or you know, anytime you just want to talk Charlotte FC, pl please feel free. There's an open invite for you to hang out on the show. And by the way, I saw those guitars uh, hanging up yes. uh, in, in the in the background there. Um, so if you and Danny want to come up with some sort of duet, I mean, we could do it. There they are, there the they guitars are. in the background. Yeah. Can't be in Nashville without some guitars. Yeah. Right? Oh, can, I don't know if you can see it in the corner. That's actually a Nashville SC. My wife works for Nashville SC. So that's a Nashville Oh, really? One. Okay. Well, I'm glad we can't see the logo. I'm, we can only see the <laughs> neck and the heads. Yeah, unfortunately. But the yeah, owner yeah. gave these some of these guitars to to some of the staff member. He's a phenomenal owner here as well. Fantastic. Yes. Well, you'll have to riff out here one time. Well, yeah. We, hey, there's, there's a yeah, phenomenal hey, hey. Go ahead. Let me give you one more song then. Let me give you one more song to part with. This You can sing this in the booth if he does start like you anticipated. We, we used to sing this last year. Derek Jones has got, got it going, going on. on. <laughs> Derek Jones has got it going on. Whenever he'd like to keep the ball and like uh, they try to take it away from him, they wouldn't. He wouldn't let him. Oh, that's, that. that's great. Will they? Will they be singing that song this weekend? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. That's great. Uh, cheers cheers to you, Ross. Thanks so much for, for previewing the game uh, with us on Charlotte Soccer Show, uh, presented by Hot Fly Brewing Company. Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern, Apple MLS Season Pass. That's where you can get the game. And it's it's been a run. And what y'all have done and, and what Apple has done to be able to take this, this league and specifically a, a club like Charlotte FC and broadcast it to the world is absolutely amazing. So cheers for you uh, for doing that and, and bringing this club uh, globally because uh, without Apple, without MLS season pass, it's not possible. Oh, what kind words, guys. Thank you so much. And the intro as well. It's the best intro I've ever had to all this. So thank you for your research and your care. It was great fun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll see you soon, Ross. Cheers. See you soon, guys. Thank you.